my God. Every kiss really does begin with K. More like every kiss begins with gay. Those are the type of jokes I bring, guys. Every kiss begins with gay. Because buying diamonds is pretty gay. <coughs> hey, everybody. I'm doing a Sunday stream because I'm not going to do a stream tomorrow because I'm going to be heading to New York City to do Legion of Skanks with uh, a lot of good guys. And then uh, part of the problem with Dave Smith. And uh, I was just listening to Dave Smith's newest podcast episode. Great guy. Great human being. I've become oddly close with Dave. Like, I literally text Dave a lot. It's weird. I think part, part of it is... Uh, he just announced, I've known this for a little bit, but he just announced that uh, him and his fiance are having a baby. I told him I'd play piano at his wedding. They got to they gotta get it going now. Uh, we just gangs, yeah, it's a podcast. It's really, it's really funny. It's, um, it's with Big J Okerson, Louis, Luis J. Gomez, who owns and runs uh, Gas Digital, Dave Smith. Great, great crew. I did it with Sal from the Impractical Jokers last time I was down there. All right, so anyway, oh yeah, Coddington, man, knocked it out of the park. But I just want to really quickly talk about Dave Smith. He's going to be having a baby. And I was just listening to his episode today. And he was always one of these like abortion until birth libertarian types because he never witnessed it. And, I, and he's such a good person and so compassionate and logical that I knew that that wouldn't last. I was like, I was actually kind of excited to hear him just change without me even saying anything. Uh, I think they're 12 weeks right now or 14. But he was like, yeah, I'm pretty sure I'm against abortion now. And I'm like, right? That's the thing is, uh, and I even told him, I'm like, because right now he's still in what, uh, anarcho-capitalist, he's an anarcho-capitalist, which is the same as what uh, Stefan Molyneux and Michael Malice are. They have a term called minarchist. Minarchist means like very small government. I'm I'm kind of minarchist, conservative-ish, libertarian-ish. Wish that we didn't need a state. Maybe we don't. I've just never seen it in practice. And I'm one of those dudes that needs uh, examples. But anyway, so I'm like, you're going to go minarchist for a bit. And you're going to say up until eight weeks, it's all good. And then you're going to realize you don't have an argument for that. And because you're consistent and libertarians and anarcho-capitalists take pride in their consistency, you will have to be full-blown pro-life. I'm like, I'll give it six months max, especially once you start having a relationship with your child. And, uh, and it's so funny watching that happen to people. And that's one thing that, because he's like me, he didn't have a big extended family. Like I have an older brother, two parents. Two uncles that I never really got to hang with. I got to hang with Uncle Ron when he wasn't in Africa shooting everything. And uh, Uncle Jim, who's now dead, was uh, in a country uh, music band and uh, fixed motorcycles. And he was just in the woods and really didn't visit very often. So I had never been around pregnancy. I'd been around children because my mom uh, would teach women about breastfeeding. But uh, I didn't see the miracle of it. I, I, I just hadn't seen it. I hadn't felt the or seen the the heartbeat and seeing the pride in the woman's eyes and uh, something really happens. And I think that that's one thing that we miss without extended families or without even being farmers, you know, I, as much as we slaughter animals, when you see the birth of a pig or the birth of a goat or something, it's very visceral and you realize just how incredible pregnancy is and what, what a miracle life is and how we can't replicate that. And we never will. You know, people can invent all the iPods they want. All right, anyway, I'm going to kick things off. Uh, Dane Cook's The Atheist Sneeze bit was pretty spot on. I don't know what that bit was. Uh, Coddington, we got to start with Coddington. Coddington uh, knocks them out of the park. Oh, just to preface what we're going to do today, I'm going to open packages. I don't have all of them. I almost have like need like a room for them, which is amazing. I'm honored, but they stack up to the point where I... I I'm like, man, I got to just start opening them. <clears throat> but I have a stack here. And um, and yeah, we're going to talk about some stuff. And first off, we got to show 
Coddington Bears amazing rendition of this is how they rule you. So so check out this this process. And this is what I love about art and freedom and individuality. I love it. Like I I I got jammed up listening to Coddington's thing and it was not just because of the song, it was because it it's the it's it's almost like birth to an artist where a family tree with a with a baby that's still the parents and the grandparents and the great grandparents and everybody that fought and survived and breastfed and bought little tiny clothes and then bigger clothes and made clothes and went to war all of that goes into a baby right and then that baby grows and all of it goes in and it's like that with art to see hallelujah this song I heard there was a secret court where David played and it pleased the Lord, but you don't really care for music, do you? It was written by Leonard Cohen, right? And it wasn't that popular when Leonard Cohen wrote it. You know, the beatniks would know about it or like the hip, the hip, the hip people or uh, musicians, people that knew about Cohen. Cohen's one of those uh, Bob Dylan types where you know a lot of his songs, but you never heard him sing it. So uh, then it got it, it became very famous from um, the Trek uh, the Shrek soundtrack when man I always blank on this dude's name. Chad, help me out. Who's the dude who covered it on Shrek? I just looked him up and I already forgot. The who covered uh, who covered Hallelujah. Come on, guys. This is a, This is an easy one, I feel like, right? Jeff Buckley. Thanks, Tristan. Thanks, Mr. Nick Down. Thank you, Chris. Thank you, Coddington. All right, cool. So that song got launched into the uh, collective conscious with Jeff Buckley. Not when he first did it in his album Alligator Wine, I believe it was called. It was Shrek. It was that soundtrack. And... Um, what he did with it was he made it so sultry and he was like i heard there was a secret chord he sang it different he's like what david played and it pleased the lord but you don't really care for music do you like that little thing and then when he was like uh it's not a cry that you hear at night it's not somebody who's seen the light. He changed not someone who's seen the light to somebody. And I know those little changes, you don't even notice them, but they're so big. It's like, it's not, it's not a, uh, it's not a cry that you hear, uh, hear at night. Listen to the difference. It's not someone who's seen the light. It's not a cry that you hear at night. It's not somebody who's seen the light. It's a cold and it's a broken hallelujah. And then what Buckley did different is he was like, hallelujah. He like screamed it. Hallelujah. And then he was like, hallelujah. But he held it for so many bars. And with that haunting uh, electric guitar, but not, not with a lot of distortion, just that... <coughs> The guitar, it was it was crazy. So then I wanted to come up with, with something for Tommy Robinson. And then you guys helped me write uh, the Tommy Robinson anthem about what happened to him in England. I didn't even come up with how they rule you. One of you guys did. I don't remember who it was. But we we sat here and we just came up with this thing. And that's the beauty of art when it when it when it's bigger than people. And you just let it kind of flow. And that's what always happened with our It's Time videos. Is people always, like, other comedians and people always thought it was so weird that I would put so much faith in fans. And it put so much um, trust and so much freedom in the hands of people sending me videos. And I'm like, that's where it, it all is. You know, and I think that real art is is additions to previous art. And so with that pref with that setup, Coddington Bear, I'm sure you guys have seen him around. He's a, a mathematician in Florida. Great dude. I've let him stay at my house before. Before I even met him. That was back when I just instinctively trusted all the bears. I mostly trust all the bears, but there's been a few instances. But uh 
he just sent me this out of nowhere. And I encourage you guys to do this. There's been a lot of suicide talk because of Bourdain. And I'm going to talk a little bit more about that today. The best way out of sadness or nihilism or depression, and we've all been there. I've been there hard, uh, is action. Do something. And I, I get blown away and I feel really hopeful when I see people just do something. Like, Kyneton did not get paid for that. He wasn't seeking my approval. He just saw something cool and just did it and sent it to me. And one thing that I love about the Unbearables is... As a group, in general, a quality we all seem to possess is just, whether it's it's writing a letter or sending me a package that I have to open or uh, adding on to a song or riffing on a joke or commenting where I got something wrong or a biblical passage that I should translate differently. It's, you're, you're, a, you're a bunch of actors. And I don't mean that like the Hollywood make-believe actors. Action is a big part of what we do. And that's how you climb out of it. And when people have told me this past few days, I can't believe the backlash I've gotten for my stance on, stance on Anthony Bourdain, <coughs> that I am not compassionate. The most compassionate thing you can do is, is tough love sometimes and say, it's, you're pathetic if you kill yourself. Act, do, go, drink water. And there is chemical imbalances, but you're in a lot more control of that than you think. This deterministic view of like, oh, I have a chemical imbalance. That's a way to not have any, any uh, autonomy or any, any uh, what's it called? I can't think of the right word. Responsibility. And as Amy used to be on Zoloft, Amy used to be so depressed, she would stare out of the window just for hours. Just horrifying depression. She's not, she hasn't been on any of that shit in years and never will again. And she's debatably the happiest person I know. We clawed our way out of, of some serious sadnesses together. And it was through action and love and commitment and the, the acceptance of pain, you know, the acceptance of responsibility. And so hats off to you, my, my brother, Coddington Bear, for just doing something. And the boys at uh, Unbearable News Network, Genghis and uh, Genghis Bear and Base Texan and, and, and Coder and everybody and Nimmer and everybody, like they just are doing it. And it feels so good to see that because not just because I don't have the time to do everything, but also because it gives me hope for our culture. And it really does. I don't think it's the end of our culture. I think our culture war right now, which is, is in full effect, is to try and keep some sense of a public square, which we're losing. I just think there's going to be a group of smart people Groups of dumb people, groups of nihilists, groups. I, I think that what we're facing isn't annihilation, it's fragmentation, which isn't a good time. So uh, I, I'm proud of our group and I got a lot of cool stuff to tell you guys today. And, and I again, I'm doing a Sunday show, A, because I can only do yard work for so long and I know I got to finish this book and I will this week. But I made my yard look awesome. I got no family here right now. And me and my brother hang, hung out all night. Didn't drink beers. I'm off, I'm off sugar right now. I'm, I'm dropping some pounds. But tomorrow I'm going to New York City to do Legion of Skanks with Big J Okerson and those guys. And then um, uh, Dave Smith's part of the Problem Podcast. And I'll be with Tom Woods at this debate. Also uh, with Judge Politano. That should be really interesting. Those guys are so intelligent, man. And... and Think what you will about anarcho-capitalists or um, libertarians or, or guys like that. Man, their brains are quick. And, and, their, and their ability to structure arguments. Like, uh, I don't agree with a lot of some of it. I, 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 but I just love that it, they're, they're at least trying to do a logical progression. Like, for example, was it Mises? Uh, no, it was, uh, I can't remember. One of these Austrian economist guys was was for abortion because he argued that the the baby is um is trespassing on your private property. And Dave Smith just and 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 whoever the guy was, I can't remember the thinker. I don't know if it was Mises, it was somebody. Dave Smith had a phenomenal rebuttal to that that he's now seeing because he's about to be a father 
as he said, but it's different. If you, if you bring someone in your hot air balloon with the expectation of safety, like you, you go come into my hot air balloon. Like when you're a thousand feet up, you can't just kick the person out. That's on you. Like you made that kid. That isn't trespassing. So that's a flaw. But, but the reason I like listening to these guys and, um, just grinding through is the re- one of the reasons I like um, evangelical Christians and Protestants typically more than Catholics these days, with the exception of, you know, Tom Woods and, and um, Michael Knowles and a few other just legendary thinkers. But because I think that their culture is to grind through ideas, to like really look at the Greek translations of words and what things mean. And I was raised Catholic, so I... Like the joke I did in Feed the Bear, available at hugepianist.com, pianist, is uh, like when I first started hanging out with Steven Crowder, he would know v- biblical verses like boom, 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 and, and just the ways of, of thinking it through and the Achilles heels of an argument. And, all, and I didn't know shit. I was like, no, man, I drank the wine and the bread and I put money in the basket. Like I'm going to heaven too, man. And it was a funny, it was such a funny moment between us that I put it in my special about how Catholicism almost intentionally keeps you ignorant. And I know this is going to offend some Catholics, but I think we need a little more offense these days in the world. Um, especially when it's in Latin, when it's like, oh, simo, 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 tu, homie, honey, mo, nino, mo, marcos, microphonus, pianus, owenus, bear us, pisos. Like, no one knows what the fuck they're saying. And I think that's by design. And when you see the contradictions of a lot of these churches with the word of Jesus, it gets a little annoying. But I'm not anti-Catholic. They, they kept the spark going through a lot of darkness. But, um, all right, without any further ado, here's Coddington Bear's rendition of the song that has just been getting passed through the hands of creative people for decades now. Let us 
Tommy Robinson's incarcerated, but you never seem to care for children, Julia. The cool and gangs will turn on you. I mean, that's just incredible. That's incredible. And I just wanted to also talk about just the, the quality and in, in people that I think is really is really valuable. I saw in the chat you guys were, uh, and I saw some super chats I'll, I'll get to in a second, that you guys were um, debating uh, Catholicism and non-Catholicism. And uh, I, I'm obsessed with this concept of truth versus power. And the good version of power, I think... And, and some of you guys have, have uh, cued me into a lot of this in the comments, is uh, are words like authority or influence. You can have great influence. I think power, there's something about it that's, that connotates force to me. And I think that that's a different thing. And I think uh, Catholicism, I think, is tied a little too much with force to me, personally. That it's almost uh, bureaucratic. It's almost like... Um, you have the word of God and then you have an institution. The institution has to support itself. And I know a lot of Catholics out there really disappointed in the current Pope. The current Pope is basically a communist and um, just really horrible. And uh, that happens when there's bureaucracy, where, where you start submitting to an institution versus God, uh, Jesus, and the word. And, and I, I just think that that... You can apply Catholicism and and uh, the, the relationship between Catholicism and some of the more uh, minimal Protestant beliefs. See, I don't see it as, as Baptist or Methodist or Presbyterian. I see it as how big is your infrastructure? Like, do you have, like, like in Cologne, you know, these huge cathedrals with cages outside, with people still with bones in them. You ever see those? Oof. But again, I'm not bashing Catholicism because I think there's a lot of great Christians that are Catholics because they have learned how they can find their personal connection to morality. And, and again, that institution survived a time of great darkness and was very influential in the um, improvements in science. That's one huge lie being pushed in, in society. And this is coming from someone who was an agnostic for 15 years. <clears throat> so I'm not one of these guys that was just born and bred Christian and have to be Christian. I came to these conclusions from both logical and spiritual awakenings. It, the, the fact that Catholicism was always trying to destroy science, which is completely insane. Christianity was one of the first religions that, that saw the world as, as physical and static, that, that God wasn't constantly coming in and just messing with things. So that you could run experiments and you could do it. Like Islam didn't believe that. That's one of the reasons that Christians out thought and out um, scienced Islam. Because Islam doesn't believe that the world is, is, well, I don't know about now. But I know in the 9th, 10th, 11th centuries, it was, it was absolutely believed that God was constantly changing everything. And measurements was just whatever God wanted it. And there was really no point. Uh, Christianity... The freeing of the individual and of the uh, God basically lets you make, make mistakes in a world he created. So that with that, now knowing that, you can see how science grew from that, where this beaker of liquid isn't just about to change. Like God says, um, that's yours to, to make something great or make something awful. And that's the whole thing of free will. And, it, and in so many religions, that wasn't the case. And uh, I saw the Dalai Lama speak in Prague once <clears throat> in 1999, I think. And he said something really cool about whatever gets you there, basically. Just whatever gets you there, whatever medicine you need. And that's why Catholics can get there 
Catholics can also not get there. It's uh, that's why I'm not anti-Catholic. I am. This Pope is a piece of shit, though. <laughs> One thing I wanted to talk about is the quality in Coddington that I was just talking about. And, and if he has a YouTube channel, I, I think he does. I don't know. But subscribe to it. And uh, own, uh, own Benjamin Clips channel, Eric Nimmer's channel. Um, who am I forgetting? The Bear Jew. He's probably got something going on. But people that just do what they love and they don't take things really personally, I've seen the, those are the people that really do well in life. Like Coddington, I've like not texted him back before 50 times before texting him back because I'm just slammed. And in my hierarchy of things to get done that day, you know, I can't riff with him. And he doesn't take it personally. A lot of these dudes don't take it personally. And guess what? This isn't about hierarchy. This isn't like, I'm so great. This is how I act. That's how I was and still am in a lot of ways. Where When I was uh, at the improv, I would sit there every night. Every night I would be a busboy or a janitor. And then I would go to the improv and I would sit in the back with the sound guy who I was boys with and wait for comedians to not show up. And anytime they didn't show up, I'd go up. And there'd be weeks would go by and I would never get a spot. And then somebody got drunk and stayed home or Dane Cook met four girls that liked his first comedy CD and he didn't feel like coming down. That's when I'd go up. And that's a quality that's really good in people. Like, for example, Brandon, who runs uh, my merch website. I suck at plugging merch. I almost never plug the website. I, 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 I misplugged it once. I said it was unbearable shop instead of unbearable store and he texted me he's like yo man all good i just i just also signed up for unbearable shop just in case you make that mistake in the future those are the dudes that you want around you and that can rise in whatever they do like bartling he just showed up in portland with three cameras like sound capability of recording sound just no self-pity Nothing. No expectation of money. In fact, he gets uncomfortable when you pay him. It's weird. That'll, that'll change, though. That always changes. At first, it's like that at first. Then you realize that, that it's your job and you have kids. and Take it. Take it, Arlene. Take the cash. But uh, that's what we made Reluctant Warlord out of. It was just his ambition. And, and I find that so cool. Eric Nimmer. Perfect example. Eric Nimmer's a great comic. He's a great friend of mine. He's had my back. But this is one thing about Eric Nimmer that a lot of other comedians don't do. He'll just show up to shit. Like, he'll be like, yo, I see you're going to Chicago. I, yo, I see you're going to Minneapolis. I'm like, yeah. He's like, yeah, yeah, I'll, I'll meet you there. And no discussion of money, no discussion of paying for airfare, no discussion of hotel. He's like, no, man, this is important. I, I, I would love to open for you if that's cool. And I'm like, yeah, of course. It wasn't me reaching out. It wasn't me being like, yo, dude, I, I can offer you this and blah, blah, blah. No, the real great people that rise are the ones that are like, it doesn't matter, dude. I'll do it for zero. I'll do it for a billion. I just want to do it. And if you say no, and if you don't text me back, I don't take it personally because I know this is about something bigger than all of us. And we're all just doing the best we can. And once you have the trust that people are doing the best they can, it is all good. You know, like sometimes Bayonet Bob gets so um focused on our demographics you know because he runs uh my audio stuff like he uploads to he uploads why didn't they laugh to itunes and podbean and all that stuff and he'll be like yo nine people just listened in bangladesh and i read it and i'm like sweet and many times i don't text back and he doesn't care and if he ever thinks that that there's something up like he's like yo dude is everything cool i'm like oh yeah of course i just screaming child on me like I'm pretty sure I have, a, I have a giant piece of stick stuck in my testicles. And he's like, oh, cool. And just onward. And again, he used to do it. He did it for like a year without getting paid. A year. Literally. He was my boy since the first year I did Why Didn't They Laugh? Like way back in LA. Way back when I used to be more liberal. And he used to make fun of me for, me, for it. But still think I was hilarious. Like I remember I watched this one movie about the Red Scare with art. It was starring uh, Cranston. And I was like, wow, what a great movie. And he was like, you would think that, huh? And he just smiled. And that's so cool. And now, of course, I know that the Red Scare is ridiculous, that it, 
of course there was actual communist threats in Hollywood, you know? And that that's all propaganda to make it seem like it was nothing when in fact it was a horrifying um, communist takeover. But people are not, people are a process. We're all a process. We're all growing and learning. And the people that I recommend you keep close to you, which is what I've always done, are the people that understand your process, your way of thinking, your, your logical sequence, your values. Because everything else comes and goes. I used to be pro-choice. To me, that's staggering to think about that. And it wasn't because I used to be a bad person and now I'm a good person. It's because I hadn't worked it through. I'm sure there's things in my mind right now that I believe that are absolutely wrong. And it's because I haven't worked it through or I haven't had the life experience to understand it. And that's one reason why the suicide stuff, I've been pretty impervious to it. I've been pretty uh, stoic when people are like, well... How do you know? Like You don't know what's in his mind and mental illness and you don't understand suicide. That's one thing I really understand. I've lost a lot of people to suicide and I've been dealing with what causes depression and, and how to deal with it my entire life. So it's almost like someone being like, like questioning my ability of knowing the piano. You know, where at that point there isn't that fear. Like if I'm talking about economics, I still have a lot more... Um, humility, I, I have humility with, with all of it, but if someone really steps up to the plate about something economic, there's a good chance I'll back down, even if I'm right, because I'm not fully confident in my knowledge of economics. I understand probably more than 98% of the population, but I'm starting to realize that that is not, that it means nothing. That doesn't mean shit. So, um, yeah. And just always assume you're the dumbest person in the room and you'll learn so much more. But when you know something, don't question yourself. That's the thing. Once you become an authority on, on something, don't let people be like, you don't know what it's like to be Anthony Bourdain. I'm like, no, of course I don't. I also don't know what it's like to be a tree. I, I can manage them. I can clip them. I can cut them. I can climb them. I can burn them. I can make tables out of them. You don't have to, no one can possibly know what it's like to be anyone else. That's why you have to structure your morality and structure your, your way of processing information. All right. This is me and my brother yesterday because now I'm not drinking beer, but I'll, you know, I did do a, a flask of vodka. <clears throat> There's this new type of kettle one. And again, I'm not sponsored by anyone. So that maybe that's what I should do. An unpaid sponsorship every week where I, I, I promote a new product that is actually awesome. And the way you know it's true is that they don't pay me and there's a good chance they probably don't even want me to endorse them. <laughs> but there's a new Kettle One cucumber infused vodka that's pretty sweet. So me and my brother and my, our boy Micah, who uh, was just detained in Iceland for nothing, kind of weird, just uh, sat around the fire and we cheers our... Uh, our flask and don't and, and just to let you just to let you guys know how come oh here we go I gotta turn the bear phone on again but uh Field of Bears is texting me something but I'm, I'll make sure I read this note hang on where's the note <sighs> delicate bear it is a top priority that I send you the two steins tomorrow the one that you purchased and the bonus one for me being a few months late on that and uh I'll send some other nice stuff. So just, just know you don't have to remind me again. It's top priority. All right. Oh, and also, yeah. So if you want to buy any hoodies, it's unbearable shop or store. Brandon crushed both of them. Dot com. And he runs uh, Crowder's merch too, which is pretty sweet. I love Crowder. But I can't believe more people didn't take the, the, sta the, the, the stance I took on uh, Anthony Bourdain. I've had been flooded flooded with letters. I'll just read you. I don't know if this reaches you personally, Owen, but I'll have to say is you have my support. Well done for being honest. I've suffered for years with suicidal depression and had failed attempts in my teens. Then I had two beautiful daughters and still the depression haunted me, but my daughters keep, kept me alive. I would plan out ways to kill myself, but every time I thought of my girls, I would be lifted enough to stop. Then in my late thirties, I got strong and fixed the issues in myself so that I no longer hurt others. Um, 
because that's what strength is. Stay true, Owen. That was from Matt. Uh, let me read another one. Oh, someone wrote me a great parody of Piano Man. I got to play that. Um, hey there, I, I'm an ex-paramedic and I'm on the SWAT team. Currently working with war vets. As your followers grow, you'll be saving lives. Thank you. Um, I, didn't, I just realized I didn't download a lot of those. That's just what I had. But I, like a 16-year-old girl from San Francisco, a 15-year-old girl from Florida, an 18-year-old boy that that's dating a girl and wants to get married and have children. These people all send me like, my dad killed himself and it pretty much ruined everything. I, I still think like, did he love me? And thank you for taking the stand against the cowardice of suicide. And uh, the, the visceral hate that I've gotten. I've lost so many followers on Instagram because Instagram is all about pretty pictures and about people following you if they already like you. It's not about conflict. So it's not like Twitter where my Twitter, my followers will go up when I piss people off. And I just watched my, my Instagram followers just start going down. And I didn't care. I mean, I care. Obviously, I want more followers because it can spread, you know, whatever we're doing. But um, it never, I never questioned what I was saying. Anthony Bourdain's a coward. He had a nine-year-old daughter. That's a hor- I don't understand why that offends people. Even if you think what Anthony Bourdain was fine, what he did was fine, why isn't the normal stance on suicide that it's cowardice? Why isn't the normal stance on abortion that it's bad? Why isn't the normal stance on race relations that if you want white people to not say mean things about black people, we expect you to do the same for us? These are obvious, normal thoughts. And, oh, real quick, here's a picture from Artling. He made this. I thought it was awesome. It's just uh, a normal family. And they're holding an LGBTQ ally sign. And they're like sad. And they look dejected because what LGBTQ has become is just this hedonistic, crazy thing. And, and you have Justin Trudeau just in there trying to finger someone's butt. Because me and Artling bonded about that too in Portland. He was like, dude, I was a liberal in art school, bro. He had the same process as me, where it's like, when you're raised in this environment, and the, per, the pervasive nature of this is crazy. My instincts and my genetics are right-wing. And by right-wing, I don't mean war hawk. I don't mean I'm the right-wing guy on, on, on Fox News saying that we have to invade every country in, in the Middle East and topple everybody. That's, not, that's a perversion of right-wing. When I say right-wing, it's... Show me evidence. Show me logic. We, we spend less than we have and uh, family values. I mean, it's, it's just that basic thing is what right wing is. And so that there's a genetic component to it. There truly is. There's people that are just genetically predis. There's a predisposition to be conservative or libertarian or whatever you want to call it. Uh, Peterson's talked about this, that there is there's more evidence of, of, of your political views being genetic, then there is like tons of other shit that people th- like trans stuff. There's more biological evidence that there is a genetic gene for conservatism than there is for transsexualism. That's a little mind blowing, huh? So where's my rights? I'm born this way. I can't not be this way. And when I would have beliefs on the left, it was because given the information I was given, that's what I thought was the right answer. And I had a very limited amount of information without the internet. The first podcast I ever listened to was Hardcore History and Joe Rogan five years ago. That's it. I was in my mid early 30s. Before that, it was whatever the hell the TV told me or books. But sometimes I didn't make the jump between a book and popular culture, which was a big mistake. <clears throat> All right, so... Oh, this is interesting. MIT scientists created a psychopath AI by feeding it violent content from Reddit. Oof. A little chilling. Which one's this? Oh, I got to play that. That's big. Oh, here's... uh, My brother is really good at trees. Like, he's an arborist. I'm kind of an arborist. Not nearly like him. 
But um, this is so hard, what you're about to watch. It's only 30 seconds. This is my brother in the tree yesterday. Look at this. This is so technically hard. I'll, I'll show you what exactly. Did, did you hear my heart? So what happened is, is he's roped off the top because there's things where this can fall. This is the difference between lumberjacks and arborists. Arborists is a much more dangerous job, by the way. What my brother does and what we do is more dangerous than people that just clear cut for us. Because he'll be in a tree and he limb this whole thing. And... Um, and you can't just drop the tree because it's around houses or power lines or a swimming pool. So lunatics like my brother that are surgeons, it's, it's almost not even dangerous the way he does it, knock on fucking tons of wood, but he's so skilled. So what, this is a, a, a coordinated effort between my brother and the, and the groundsman, which is usually me. He ropes off that top piece so it comes down gently and the groundsman which here is jimbo our boy jimbo um he has to like let it go like so it doesn't jolt my brother because as much as the odds are that tree won't come down but if you cut off something that weighs a thousand pounds and it just bang so you have to like give with it so just watch this one more time that that top is probably a thousand pounds at least and he's roped it off to itself and dropping it gently down. Then the rest of the tree, he'll do the same thing in six foot increments. And then on the ground, my job would be to cut it up into 18 inch um, like pieces like this so that you could theoretically split it for uh, wood. Like uh, our boy Chicken Coop's brother is a quadriplegic. So, and our winters are eight months long and insanely cold. So a lot of this wood, we just chop up and bring it over to him to keep him warm and all that. Cause he has no ability of using his arms and legs. So uh, we have to do that, but it's a, it's a win-win cause we get to keep him warm and uh, it's a place to bring the wood, but just watch this. Watch, watch the give, watch the give from the groundsman. As a groundsman, I, I like to appreciate good groundsman skills. Watch this. Watch the give. Give. See? Like, like, see that like tent or whatever down there? That's how, uh, that's how skilled these guys are. Like, they can drop things like within this far of where they want. And uh, what was I talking about? <laughs> And that tree was roped into itself. It's easier. It's, there's a different hazard, though, when it's roped into another tree. Because then, you know, things can really kick back. That also happens when you're cutting a tree with pressure. Like, uh, me and my brother had this tree recently where it, a giant tree got knocked over. All the roots, uh, it's huge. And so we had to chop it up. But the problem with that is there's going to be one tipping point where you chop it. This whole section is so much heavier, it'll go boom. And uh, if you're near it, you're dead. So that's why it's so mathematical. And these dudes are so uh, smart. And, and the way you cut these, you do a wedge. So you guide where it's going to go. It looks like a pie shape. And then you back cut it so that it falls on the pie shape. And you have to be able to study the trees and know where the twists are and where the knots are and where it's dead and where might there be pressure where it just pops. And um, it's a fascinating job. I think in a lot of ways, my brother is, is significantly more interesting than me. He just, uh, for whatever reason, doesn't do live streams or entertain. But I'm about to play you a four minute clip and that, uh, let me just read a couple of these uh, super chats so they don't pile up. And I do appreciate the super chats, ladies and gentlemen. It's a way I, um, pay my bills and, and it's a way for, it's also feedback for me and I'll tell you another thing is I don't always know 
how good my streams are. Like some streams, I'm like, that was a monster stream. Like there's been the occasion stream. Like when I did the mashup of Fur Elise and uh, Seven Nation Army, I knew that was a home run. But some streams, I'm like, I don't even know if people, like, is this good? And it's just like being a waiter or a piano player. I get to judge it based on tips. So if you uh, super chat me or give me a tip, I can be like, oh, sweet. So that's a good, that's good. That's like the value of it because I'll never be sponsored. And if you're at all short on cash, just write a comment. Or even if you don't feel like super chatting, that's fine too. Just write a comment uh, or share it uh, because I'm doing good these days. So you don't feel like you have to uh, bend and twist yourself to uh, to give me cash because we're good. We're stable. We're, uh, we're in open waters. All right. Man, I'm so peppy and kind of positive right now because the last two days, all I've had is kale, kale that I grow myself, spinach, bison, and bone marrow, and steak. So like, I feel like I'm naturally on some sort of stimulant. And it's so funny, the Bourdain thing I did, so many people accused me of being on cocaine when I just got off a plane, when I was like talking about how Bourdain was a coward, everyone was like, hey, hey man, cocaine is, is going to ruin you. It, it's called fucking allergies. People seriously project so much shit on, on each other. Yeah, yeah. A guy that, that doesn't ever do cocaine. But if but I figured, you know, the day I'm going to do cocaine, when I'm about to do two legs of air travel, leaving my wife and kid, where I've been in a city for eight days, and then as soon as I get off an airplane to do a, a live stream, that's, that's exactly when I'm just going to start banging out lines. Or... I'm allergic to that goldenrod shit that's all over Washington because my allergies are already starting to go down, but I'm still, I still have a cough. Uh, no, the, the thing that gets me really jacked up is uh, <clears throat> not eating sugar. Like my body just starts using fuel. It's so crazy. Like, like in, in just two days, I'm already like, man, I seriously think I could learn another language because sugar just gets me so sleepy and I don't, I, I don't think I get REM. All right, Lucas, I'm a Christian conservative comic in the SoCal area, and you are an inspiration and a hero of mine. I have a cover of Hallelujah on my channel. It's a great song. I love movies, but hate Hollywood. Is Movie Bear taken? No, it is not. And my friend, I'm, I'm slowly b building a comedy channel, Unbearable Comedy. So please send me your sets. Send me clips. Send me what you're up to, because um, I want to continue producing uh, specials for other people that would never get a shot in, in soy infested Hollywood. So I'm getting pretty good at them and I, I have a crew and I have a team and I will be the most generous you'll ever experience ever with, with, with specials. I'll give you the best deal you'll ever imagine because for me, it, it's, I want content. I want a lot of specials on a channel and I want to just keep growing it. My dream long term is to have just um, um, a lot of comedy that I can have on like a Pandora channel or some sort of uh, radio channel and a YouTube channel and a Vimeo channel and all that stuff and just really go off grid with it and, and have it be very diverse in, in ideas. I just don't want the authoritarian shit. I just don't want the same fucking Trump joke 50,000 times in a row. It's, it's, it's literally soul crushing. And, and, I, and I'm sick of complaining about it, so I'm actually trying to do it. Like I, I did Nimmer's half hour, and I'm going to put his next half hour up. But man, I need some whites, man. My only guy is black. I mean, I'm, I feel like I'm selling out my own race. <laughs> Don't need women, though. I mean, if you're really funny, it's great. But I have no desire to be like, we need to have women comedians. She only has 10 minutes, but she's been through a lot. Now, get an hour. And of course, I would produce you if you're a woman, but it's not a bonus if you're a woman. <clears throat> I think you've had enough. Big Bear, did you put a piano key in my box you made with the Stein? Oh, yeah, I totally am. So if I get a key, does it mean I can play as well as you do? No, but it does mean you have a piece of history. The piano that I used in October, in November, in December... Before I even had my channel monetized, 
just when I was streaming, just to, when I was fucking getting crushed, uh, that piano that ended up getting just worn out, it's 110 years old, I burned it. But you'll have a piece of that. You are right about Bourdain. Believe me, we all have thought about it. Of course, it's human nature. And you have to... T- it doesn't help people to say like, no, be, he has mental issues. Okay, so now he has an, a re, an excuse to kill himself. When you say, oh, there's mental, it's a mental disease or whatever the fuck you want to call it. That's like, a, a pe- it's the same with pedophilia. It's like saying like, oh, he's just, it's their culture. They fuck goats. It's like, no, you don't fuck goats in America, dude. Spoko bear. Hey, Owen, need to be uh, beautified. Spoko bear. Verified, my friend. I can't affect your beauty, but I can't affect your bear status. Drove down from Spokane, Washington and met you at the Prosser Show. I let you know about the beer reparations in Portland before the show. And 15 minutes later, it was in your set. Oh, yeah, buddy. I run and gun. I run and I gun. And uh, yeah, welcome, Spoko Bear. And I will be spending a lot more time in eastern Washington very soon, my friend. We're going to be doing a lot more shows in the Pacific Northwest. And I could not believe the quality of human being that I met in eastern Washington and in Bellevue and in Portland. It's not... There's a small amount of people that have ruined Portland, but there's some great people there. And I will be there consistently to entertain you wonderful people. And I can't wait to go to Idaho. <clears throat> but I'm not going to do the tour across the country before we have the baby. I made the executive decision that the money is not worth it. And the um, it just isn't worth it. Because if my baby comes, I'm just driving through the night. I, uh, that will be the one time I do actually do cocaine if I need to. (laughs) I did cocaine a couple times in 2005. I thought it was the most overrated, complete nonsense ever. It tasted like metal and it just made you think your bad ideas were good ideas for about 20 minutes. And then you just keep licking your gums and you feel like dirt. I have no idea how that sells people to a life of addiction. For me, it, it's not my my addiction is with good times or like uh, drinking beers with people that I enjoy or beers and piano, you know. So I try to keep that shit in check. Maybe once a week I'll do piano hang beers, but uh, you know I'm 38. I can't just fucking drink beers every night. Although working a blue collar job does make you feel like you've earned it, I will say that. That there's a lot of people with jobs where they can't comprehend when you like just physically put your body through and then the end of the day you just have a cold, uh, like PBR, just cold, just ice cold, just you sip it, you look out your your lawn <clears throat> that you pay for with just sweat and nothing tastes better in the whole world. Because people that have office jobs a lot of times, beer seems indulgent and self-destructive because it is. If you just like sit in a chair all day and then go home and drink a six pack, kind of bad on your body. But if you just like, like my brother's chiseled, he has at least two twisted teas and four beers every day. And I frankly don't feel like I can tell him not to because he fucking earns it and he's healthy as shit. I'm fatter than he is. And um, he pulls himself up trees He's a wonderful father uh, to three children and just a great guy. And who the fuck am I to say he can't unwind? And he will smoke a couple rollies, you know, all natural tobacco, but it's probably not good for your lungs. He knows that, but he's like, dude, fuck it. Who the hell am I to tell him not to? He knows I need him to live forever, but fucking he's got to land the plane, man. All right. I'm fighting my big fight right now. It has been off, put off for decades. I've never had sharper weapons and stronger armor. Thank you, Owen and the Bears. Oh, dude, we're here for you, brother. I've been getting so many positive emails, especially with the suicide talk, which is hilariously ironic, where people are like, man, I was going to... I literally get emails of people being like, I was going to kill myself until I found the Bears. And then I look on the trolls, and the trolls are just like... Because what the bears do is the bears show people that pain's okay. Trying hard is acceptable. Being yourself is okay. Disagreements are okay. You know, spiritual discussions are okay. It's all okay. You're not a demographic. You're not just 
cis straight white male or lesbian black woman with no foot. And, and it's, it's so cool to see the positive effects that our little group has on the world and the world. The, the influence of an individual is so profound and it's not because I'm special. All of you have the same thing. Like, look at what Coddington just did. He's a fucking retard in Florida. Retard. Florida. Dude lives in fucking Florida. Dude lives in Florida. I'm just looking in the, in the chat. I want to see kind of pair uh, react. It is, but enlisted because Owen up. No, Coddington. Upload yours, dude. I want you to get the hits. I just wanted to show it to a lot of people. No, don't unlist yours. Get the fuck out of here. Spread it. Any clip you like of mine on my channel, cut it, put it on your channel. If you think you can make money on the hits, send it. Keep all of it. Spread it. I'm dead serious. Look at what Coddington just did. He's a retard in Florida. And he just made something beautiful. Dude's retarded. Like a monkey. He just figured out some program to be able to record himself. So literally any joke you see on mine, even specials you've bought, cut it up, put on, put them up on your channel. Build your channel. Build your channel with my clips. Free. You don't have to give me shit. That's the beauty of it. I don't put my three specials that I sell on my YouTube channel because I have to make money to pay my bills. And, and scarcity is a thing. Don't. Of course I want to. My brother last night was like, dude, you're like fucking autistic. And I'm like, why? He's like, you seriously don't care about money. And I don't. I care about my family. I care about safety, protection, shit like that. I seriously don't care. He's like, dude, you'd live on like a couch. He's like, you're like Steve Jobs, except for those stupid fuck, except instead of fucking um, turtlenecks, you just wear that fucking uh, Unbearables hoodie every day. And you're just always thinking about really intense shit. And he's right. So I had to structure a way to make money. And if I put it up for free, uh, people won't buy it as much. People will buy it and be kind. Like I put a promo code for a free, uh, for a free download. I always do on my Patreon for people that do 10 bucks or more a month. And same with my subscriptions. I'll like send out an email blast. Like here's a promo code for your support. And people still will buy it. Even though you don't have to do that. Fucking, that's the whole point is please have it on the house. You've been so supportive. But, uh, you know, if you, if you give it for free, people are just in, not, they're not going to pay for it in, in general. And I don't blame them at all. It feels really good to be able to sell something. I don't want to just be the guy that people feel they have to support. Like, I want to sell shit. I want people to be like, this was worth it. And I know overall... You guys feel it's worth it, like my Patreon supporters and the subscribers and, and people that will just give me a donation on the website. Because you think like I do, where you're like, I want to save this culture. And the only way to do that when you're not going to get sponsored by fucking Hollywood or Washington, D.C. or any of these power people is uh, with, with grassroots donations. But I feel better when I sell things because I feel like it's more consensual. I can't explain it. Roy, nice to see you. Oh, thank you, buddy. Nice to see you today, Owen. Got all you guys in my thoughts and prayers. Awesome performance in Bellevue. What's up, Nimmer? God bless you all. What a, what a nice comment. Is Nimmer in the chat? Where's Nimmer at? I was just texting with him. But I mean that, though. Even specials that you've bought of mine, feel free to clip your favorite part and put it on your YouTube channel. Because... That's how we win. And winning isn't about defeating people or hurting people or taking control. It's, it's about not becoming fragmented. We still have an opportunity to keep the, um, you know, the, the town center diverse. And I don't mean diverse in skin tone. That comes naturally. It's diverse in thought. And so the more you guys spread clips... The more people don't think it's that crazy that they that their coworker likes me, or that someone questions the wage gap, or that people wonder why Manhattan isn't underwater when Al Gore said it wouldn't be in 2012, because those people, those leftists, are zebras. They're they're pack animals. They're not evil. They're they're just cowards. You know, my brother has a nickname for someone that he knows. I'm not gonna say who, but 
He calls him the leader of cowards. And the way you got to save a lot of leftists from themselves. Show them that the cool kids still value logos, Socratic method, science, questions, freedom. Because a lot of losers want a bigger state. They want a lack of freedom. A lot of these people that are bottom 20, bottom 30% of the population know that in the free market they will lose. So they want the government with force to take it from productive people and give it to them. Little do they know, it would benefit them more if they just allowed the free market to happen because they would get more wealth overall. But they're stupid, so they don't know that. So you got to save them from themselves because they're so stupid. The reason they can't function well in the free market is they're very stupid. So they think, I want, I want money. He has money. I take his money. I close down his, his business and I take his money now. That works for a month. That's why people that win the lottery end up broke typically because a lot of times people that aren't wealthy, there's a reason they aren't wealthy because they don't have the cultural or mental infrastructure to maintain wealth. So <clears throat> these people will take the resources short term. That business closes. Eight people are now unemployed. Okay. Now those eight people aren't buying goods in town. People now move from the town. Now that person's home is devalued. You, you see the, what I'm saying? That's just one instance. It's, but they're so stupid, they don't know that. That's why they can't function in the free market. They can't think, what do I have that'll make other people's lives better? How do I make it as cheap as possible and how do I make their lives as good as possible? If you let individuals think that way, the entire civilization goes, <clears throat> but stupid people can't see that. And I, I saw that with the Bourdain thing. People are so short-term thinking that they think I was being low compassion that me saying Anthony Bourdain is a coward is, is me not caring about people when one step further, which they can't think they can't prepare for the future. They can't think like, Hmm, well, a to B to C, they just think a, 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 right. When I condemn suicide and call it cowardice, there will be a kid out there or a depressed adult on the verge of nihilism who thinks, Man, I don't want to be looked at as a coward. When you tweet, now you are free now, Anthony Bourdain, someone on the verge will go, that's how people will view me. I'll finally have respect and attention. And, and you enter a fugue state sometimes. There's people that have, I, I know people that have failed suicide attempts. Were they in their mind, they felt they were never even going to do it. It just, it just kept happening. That's why a lot of times when someone shoots themselves, in the last minute, they kind of pull back and the bullet will graze their head because they get obsessed with the taboo of it. They get obsessed with like how crazy it would be. And then this weird glitch happens in their brain. And they just keep going, right? A way to, to, to snap them out of that is overwhelming cultural condemnation of suicide. If you kill yourself, you're a coward. Straight up. And I have compassion for people that have witnessed war and they have a moral injury. I, I really do. I, I, I can't imagine that life. Um, and I, I can usually imagine most lives. War vet, I truly can't. I've never killed a man. And I've never killed a civilian. And I know I could. I know I could be one of those guys in Afghanistan that was breaking in a, do a door. And some little kid ran out and blew the kid's head off. And then you got to secure the area. And then you, you smell the body <clears throat> or you kill a dude and his kids come out when you secure the area that must fucking hurt. And then you come back to this stupid world where everybody's like, I just think trans people should be able to shit anywhere they want. And you're just like, like that must be almost intolerable. So I don't enjoy calling those people pussies and cowards. I really don't, but I also feel it though. You're deserting your team. You're deserting your, uh, your, your, your unit by killing yourself. We need you on this planet. Like, just like in war, if you bail on war, if you just, you're like, this sucks, I'm out. Think of the people left behind. We fucking need you, dude. We need you to cover that flank. That's how the living are.
This whole world is war. And we rely on each other. And don't ever use someone's love for you to hurt them. Because every bit that someone loves you, when you kill yourself, that becomes just daggers. Every ounce of love someone has for you, you just turn that into poison. And so the more someone loves you, the more you just devastated them. And think about that. That's why I have no respect for people who kill themselves. And I've known a lot. People I've loved. And I still, if they came back to life, I would just start beating the fuck out of them. And be like, why would you do that to us? You know? I believe the greatest power is to be a mover of men. Your thoughts? An influencer. An authority. Someone people look up to. Someone that people want to move. I didn't order Coddington to do that song. Like, I, and I'm not even this big mover of men. But to see people be inspired by things I've said, that I was inspired by things other people said. Like, I'll hear uh, Jordan Peterson or my brother or my mother or my wife uh, say something. I can't believe I put Jordan Peterson on the same level as my family. But intellectually, he's very inspiring to me. And I'll be inspired. And then I'll do something. And then someone else will be inspired by me and do something. And that is a mover of men. But it's not at the barrel of a gun. And we're all capable of it. You just have to be honest. And you have to be able to take the arrows. You know, I've gotten good at it, but it still sucks. Seeing all the people bailing on me, people that I've had relationships with, like in Insta Instagram direct message or something, who have sent me fucking funny memes who are like, you're human garbage. I can't believe what you said about Anthony Bourdain. And I just, I have to be cold. I'm like, bye. No one will miss you. I don't like that. I fucking don't like not being liked. I'm a pleaser. That's one reason why I used to have sex with women that I didn't love. I wanted people to be happy. I know that sounds fucking insane. Because usually you think of someone who like a man who sleeps with a woman as like some sort of predator. But not me. I was, and a lot of men are like that. I think there's a huge amount of men that have been with women just to be like, are you happy? And I have that instinct and I've, I've had to learn to uh, fight that and get past it. That's one reason why monogamy is so easy for me because lust isn't my vice, rage is. I think we all can see that. Uh, pleasing people was a vice of mine and that's in the book that I'm currently writing. And um, I didn't want to let people down, especially women. Like if a woman would, would, would say something sexual to me, I felt really uncomfortable. Um, don't get me wrong, I'm also a man. Like I'm also have lust. But I felt, I felt like I, I would make them feel bad if I didn't engage on some level and be like, oh yeah, you're hot too. Or yeah, fuck yeah, I don't know. And then I was like, why? They don't really care. I'm nothing to them. I'm just a blip on their radar too. Like it's almost this narcissistic trait to be like, I will make women happy. You know, I, I fucking, I was a piece of pizza to them, you know? And the real, the real N word is no. To say, no, that's wrong. I want to fuck you. I don't care. You, you're not gonna. Well, you think I'm ugly? No, I'm not even going to talk to you anymore. I think you're fucking crazy. And, and sometimes people are like, oh, you're so aggressive, Big Bear. Like sometimes you, uh, you come across as so hateful and jarring. Don't you think like for the movement, we should talk nicer? I'm like, I'm not in your fucking movement, dude. I'm an artist. I'm not a propagandist. I'm not a politician. I'm not here figuring out how to push an agenda. I'm doing the best I can. And I got to be cold as fuck a lot. When someone's like, man, I've been following you for 10 years. Like you're my favorite comedian and I always think you're human garbage. In my, in my heart, I'm like, oh God, that hurts. But outwardly, I'm like, no one will ever miss you, bitch. Your, your mom likes to suck off dudes with cars. Anybody with a car, your mom will blow. She'll suck off any dude with four wheels. Analysis bear. Owen. I ask that you further research the Catholic Church. At times, Catholicism was pushing science forward. Oh, I just said that, by the way. I, I'm trying really hard to not demonize the Catholic Church because I think that they've gotten over-demonized. It's similar to Trump. Like, Trump deserves certain criticisms, 
But the media has gone so fucking crazy that I don't even mock him. Because it's like, it's like a guy at a party that's kind of being douchey and you want to make fun of him. And then people just start beating the fuck out of him. You try to save him. (laughs) That's how I feel about the Catholic Church. Like they do have problems and I don't like how they institutionalized God, but they do not deserve what they've been said. All right. Also, the size and structure of the church allows it to help millions with its many charities. Right. I like that it brought Christianity to huge swaths of land in the world. I see that. I see the the goodness of, of what it has done. But, you know, you're not doing anybody any favors by saying that the, the Pope and the Catholic Church are uh, are godly. Like, the Pope is a fucking commie. I wouldn't be surprised if he doesn't even believe in God. The dude is not a good dude, man. And it's almost like Hollywood is to art like the Catholic Church is to uh, Christianity. Like, yeah, you'll have some art in there. But in, in the end of the day, it's about them more than it is about God. And I'm not condemning pe- being Catholic. Trust me, I'm not. I can't illustrate that enough. Because I'm not doing that thing that people do where it's like, Catholics are the fucking, you know, I'm not even going to get into it. But uh, 99% of Catholics are, are not doing any of the shit that they've been blasted for. But in the end of the day, is it is it the Christianity that I... I'm drawn to? No. It's probably one of the reasons I was an agnostic for 15 years and why I thought talk of God was funny. Like when I, I I wouldn't even say I I believe in God because I felt silly because of the the lies I saw as a child. You know, the hypocrisy. I I, I looked at these people as, as terrible. And then I would meet people like Crowder and this one dude I met in South Carolina when I was out touring. Just simple Interactions. That's the power of the individual, man. Just these simple people that will give you a, a, a look into Christianity from another eye. That it isn't about, um, that it isn't, ritual's important, tradition's important, but not the, just the countless saints and the fucking <clears throat> gold statues and shit. I'm, I'm sorry, it's not for me. Hey, Owen, first time catching the stream live. What are your thoughts on Razor Fist? Have you seen this video on Hollywood communism? I super recommend it. I haven't seen it. I know that uh, they've been on Crowder, so I'm sure they're cool. But I don't really have an opinion. But I'll look into it. Thank you for the super chat. Destroyer Bear. Thanks, Big Bear, for the shout out to my channel the other day. Unbearable Clips. I'm up to 18 subscribers now. Thanks for the mission, Big Bear, fighting on this hill with you. I'm telling you, man, that's where it's at. Fight for 20. Fight for 30. Fight for 35. And there's other people with 5 million subscribers that have a fucking gun in their mouth. It's about the fight. It's about the mission. It's about the truth. It isn't about the quantity. Because everything is in proportion. Look at fucking Anthony Bourdain. The man is a world-traveling cook. And he just became like a purple belt in jiu-jitsu. He has all the women he wants, all the money he wants, and he hangs himself in France. It could have been because of the Muslims. He probably took one look out and he was like, what happened to France? And then he just started strangling himself. But honestly, though, it's about the the purpose. And it's not about the quantity. Some of the most depressed people I know are rich stars. They're they're miserable. I don't know why they don't kill themselves. Me Me and Jason were talking about that yesterday, my brother. That sometimes it's so surprising how little suicide there is, given the nihilistic nature of a lot of people. Where if you think life is only for commodity, only for self-pleasure, only about self-exploration, only about you, once you hit 40, time just takes it away slowly. And then what do you have to look forward to? Now, if you live a life of purpose, of meaning, of family, it never stops. In fact, you only build on it. You only love your wife more. Like the concept of needing to be with a bunch of women seems so alien to me now. And like, I don't even get it. Like sometimes if I'm with dudes and one of them's like, man, look at that girl's ass. Like I, I, I almost get uncomfortable. Like I'm like, yeah, right. I don't even agree like that, but I'm just like, no, but we're just talking about the fed. And there was a time when I thought that that was going to be my downfall in marriage was, was, um, fidelity. I, I, when I was in my twenties, I was like, I'm never going to get married. How am I supposed to be with one person? And then you realize that that's where it's at, man. And there's people, I feel bad for the people that, um, haven't been taught that. 
because there's some some pain that I went through that it was unnecessary. I'm glad I built my character, but it's not because my parents were these like hedon, hedonistic people either. They'd only been with each other. So they didn't really understand how to teach me about groupies or like touring stadiums and how to, you know, deal with that level of attention. When you're 25 and just women are like, we want to suck your dick. We don't want to date you. Like you need a moral compass for someone to teach you like why that doesn't go anywhere. It's not good or bad. It just isn't anything. It's sugar. It's like, it's like a nutritionist. Someone should teach you that Burger King isn't as good as a slow cooked steak. Just, just that simple. And it's not a moral issue. It's not like someone who's had sex with a bunch of people is an evil person unless they're married or made a promise to somebody. But it's fucking empty calories. Just a waste of time, dude. I wish that I had started younger. I'm glad everything panned out the way it did because Amy is the person I should be with for life and I wouldn't have met her at 25 because she was fucking 18 at the time, 17. I could have Amish that shit maybe. But I wish I had had eight kids. I mean, I wish I had started having kids at 25. You know, we might be able to get up to four, but to really get those massive families, you got to start young. You got to be like the the Redmonds, you know, where we shot that special. Like uh, Joe got married. He's young as fuck. Early 20s, I think. I think he's on his second kid. <coughs> All right, check the bear phone. Oh, dude, it's it's dead. I will after this, though. And I'll be better at the bear phone. Hey, big bear. Uh... I lost it. Hey, Big Bear, could I be uh, verified as either Kuma-san or Kuma Bear? Welcome, Kuma Bear. I like it. I speak good Japanese. Ichni, uh, this is all I know. Ichni Sanchi Go Roko Ichi Achi Ku Ju. Niju Ich, Niju Si, Niju San, Niju Go, Niju Roko, Niju Achi, Niju Ku, Niju. I just counted. I used to work at a Japanese restaurant. I also took karate for like a month when I was nine. <clears throat> I punched some dude's elbow and fucked up my hand. And as a piano player, I was like, this is not worth it. Also, I live in the pull-up Tacoma area, and I'm hoping we can be boys. Fuck yeah, dude. I need boys. I live in the country up there. Like, there's no neighborhood. Like, so I need some boys. So I would love to be your boy, Kuma Bear. Unless you freak me out. Like, if we're out having beers, I may pull the jump cord if you're a fucking psycho. But in general, I'm guessing you're not. I have had such good experiences with bears. There's only been about five that ruined the batch. All right. I'm seeing JBP live tonight. Yeah, I spent money to brag about this shit. Yes, you're going to love it. And with Dave Rubin. Rubin's my boy. Me and him have been texting since he's been on tour. He says it's fucking insane. Like the... It's like when I used to tour with Vince Vaughn. It's so weird going from like clubs to going to 5,000 people. And it's not like it multiplies the pleasure or the experience. It's just so different. Where it's like you have to pause. You tell a joke. And in the club, it's like, ha, ah, and then you're right into it. With the huge theater, you tell a joke. And you got to let the, the laugh just go. <sighs> and there's a different pacing. And the thing about Peterson is so many people are so into him that his audience must be popping. It's like my Bellevue show. Like watch my live from Bellevue. It's an hour and a half. I put on YouTube for free. Um, the crowd was just with me the whole time. And that's so cool. <clears throat> and JBP's audience, I bet, is like that even more. And um, so Dave Rubin, as I said, I made that call eight months ago. I said, Dave Rubin's going to be a monster comedian. Mark my words. And so far, I'm right, because people that have seen him perform say he crushes, and he just got exposed to all of Jordan Peterson's, like, hardcore fans on the road. He has his own podcast. He's, he's a right-wing gay Jew. So he's just fucking bam, bam, bam. So just keep an eye out for that motherfucker. This is from Midwest uh, Indian Brown Bear. Fuck suicide. Stay in the fight. Lots of love, Owen. Love it. I sent you some good stuff, open gifts. I'm, I'm going to, I promise. 
I'm thinking about trying to learn piano to help cope with some stuff. Would you recommend 61 or 88? If I want to learn to play classical, always go 88, but only white keys. The black keys will bring down the price of homes in your area. I'm just kidding. 88, get weighted keys too. <laughs> you gotta go weighted. Oh, just a, something I'm working on. A bunch of people sent me a bunch of letters about uh, them dealing with suicide as children. And I told them to read their own letters and send me the audio. And I'm going to cut it up and make a song out of it. So you need weighted keys for that. Richmond, love the streams. My husband and I talked about your stance on Bourdain's suicide. We both agree that suicide is a cowardly path. Can I please be verified as Richmond Bear? Welcome, Richmond Bear. Keep on keeping on. Hope to see you in Michigan soon. Michigan is one of my top picks for where I'm going next. I love Northern Michigan. It is heaven. So, uh, and the people up there are great. Um, it's the perfect blend of like country values, family values, but also a little bit of that. Um, I can't explain it. Almost like that Northeastern, we still go, we go out. Cause one of the things about the deep South is the people are awesome, but a lot of them just don't go out. Like they're just like, dude, I'm fucking chilling. If you want to come make us laugh, you know, I live here, man. We'll shoot guns. And I'm like, that's awesome and everything. But I got to get you out to a show. <laughs> uh, all right. You're leading by example. That's why you're a legend, bro. Never stop. The truth is always needed. Thanks, Paul. Paul Bear. How do I go about locking down Lager Bear? I'll tell you right now. Uh, welcome, Lager Bear. Go to unbearablesapp.com and lock it in. Same with all you bears. That's the best way because sometimes I accidentally verify someone and there's already a bear name and then we have to readjust. But, and it's also an unbelievably cool chat. People are just chatting on there 24 hours a day. And sometimes I just go in and read it like a creep, like this weird voyeuristic character that's just reading what people are talking about. But uh, really cool conversations go down there all day long. It's so fucking cool. And, uh, and I think you register with your email. I've never done an email blast with any of it, but it's really cool that I could have a base of people uh, in your emails. I've just never used it. I, I've done emails for people that sign up at, uh, at my website, but I frankly don't understand email blasts that well. Amy does. Amy's the one who always does that. I just see that it gets sent out because MailChimp, which is very racist, by the way. MailChimp. I mean, that's a shot at black people. MailChimp. Not cool. That Valerie bitch that worked for Obama, she's wicked offended. You should do reaction to Not About Fortnite by Dan Bull. It's essentially a diss track directed at YouTube. I'm sure you'd appreciate it. I'll check that out. Dan Bull. Good name. Hey, Owen, I've been following you for so long. Keep speaking the truth. We need it. Can I be verified as Blunt Bear? Welcome, Blunt Bear. Isn't it crazy how positive people are to the truth or even just knowing that I'm saying what I believe to be true. Because I'm not arrogant enough to think that I'm speaking truth because I'm a mortal, not immortal. I'm a mortal and flawed and have my own fucking shit going on. I know there is truth and I'm just going to say what I believe it to be. And if enough people do that, it's like sonar, man. It's like how I used to use Twitter. It was joke sonar. Just If enough people send out what they believe to be true, you start seeing what is true. If people are lying, if people are, 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 are manipulating, if people are saying what they think others want to hear so they get invited to cocktail parties, you can't see reality. And that's when people end up in dark holes and nihilism and shit. That's why Jordan Peterson has fucking helped so many people, myself included, because he said... Bear the weight of existence. Magster Bear. Oh, thank you. That's very generous. Uh, indentured Servant. Suicide is for the weak. Living is for the strong. Encourage the harder road. We are eternal. All the pain is an illusion. I, I love that, dude. <clears throat> Bedros Peter Bedrosian. Harry Bear. Damn it, Owen. Open the packages. Nimmer is here. Okay, I'll, I'll open some packages. <clears throat> Man. Do not bend. Oh, this is cool. There's a cartoon on it. Open soonish. Eventually, maybe. There's a little cartoon. That's pretty sweet. This is from 
Jennifer Smith. Let's take a look, yo. That'd be funny if it was just a piece of cardboard. And they're like, just please don't bend the cardboard. All right, this is, wow, this is cool. Wow, that's awesome. That's an original. I remember seeing the, her make that. All right, let me read this card. Rachel and Bastian. Hey, Owen, Amy, and Walter. Thank you for all you do, the community you've built, and sharing your family with all of us. Mainstream media and social media can be very discouraging. You and the Unbearables help all of us see we aren't alone, and there are still strong families out there. Thank you for sticking with it and staying strong when it would be easy to give up. Jennifer, Bastian's mom, Bastian, Bastian Bear. That's so cool, Jennifer. Thank you. What is this? Certified of Authenticity. The signature and embedded seal on this certified artwork. Uh, oh, this is called Joy. Artist Jen Jennifer made this. Bastionsmom.com in case anyone wants to get more of her work. Bastian, B-A-S-T-I-A-N-S, mom.com. She's out of New Mexico. That's super cool. It's going right up there, dude. All right, let's keep this party going. This is from Libertas Institute. Sounds intense. That's the name of Dave Smith's special, by the way. Libertas. Check it out on iTunes. Oh, we got some books. This is Show Business by Connor Boyack, illustrated by Elijah Stanford. Boom. I will have to check this out. Thank you very much. Libertas Institute by way of Jace. Oh, Jace. I know Jace. This is from Ronnie. Ronnie Schreiber. Strong name. Oh, and as I mentioned in my email, though you have been an earnest and diligent show for the Jews in Israel, hilarious, it shouldn't really bother you that you haven't received your shekels yet. You're a mere goy shill, but I'm an actual Hebrew, fairly active in uh, my Judaism and in looking out for the interests of my community here and in Israel. And the elders of Zion have yet to send me a check for my share of world domination. Not only that, but the elders haven't even let me know the time and location for their weekly planning meetings. So I'm really on my own here when it comes to how to manipulate you going. This is fucking hysterical, by the way. It's the same thing with white privilege. It's the same joke. It's like, where's my white privilege? <laughs> However, after thinking about it, I've decided you do need to be rewarded for your shilling. At first, I considered 30 pieces of silver. But knowing, as I do, that you try so, so hard to avoid offending people, I decided that would be problematic and possibly offensive to Christians like you. Instead, I'm sending you genuine shekels, or shekels, as the Israeli government spells it. Crafty shylack that I am. Though these coins are old shekels, no longer negotiable currency, and have only numismatic value, but at least you don't have to try to schnorr from my landsman Ben Shapiro and Dennis Prager any longer. That's from Ronnie Schreiber, the Electric Harmonica Company. Dude, I love Ronnie Schreiber. He's, he chats with us a lot in the Super Chats. Let's see what we got here. If this is real Jewish shekels, that is going to be so fucking funny. Oh, dude. <laughs> I finally got it. I finally got paid by the Jews. This is big for me. <laughs> Look at that. How hilarious is that? Guys, I just got paid shekels. Wow. All I had to do is sell out the whites and just not ask any real questions. Thank you, Jews. I feel so special. Um, this is from Tiffany. <coughs> you see how fucking funny the bears are, by the way? Like, legitimately, that's that's one of the funniest things I've read in, in, like, a really long time. Except for everything I write. Oh, is this more coffee? Sick. Bill writes coffee. Boom. Helping Big Bear fight the good fight by staying awake, baby. Boom. That was back from May... That's from March 5th. I think that's been sitting there a while. But I don't think beans go bad. I read this one? To your own Benjamin. 
I am not church. I can't read your handwriting, buddy. Alex, buddy, I can't read a word, but that looks cool. Just, I'll, I'll, just know I got it. I'm not dissing you by not responding. I literally don't know what you, I can't, you should write prescriptions for doctors. I can design you a house. That's all I got. If you design me a house, please make it more legible. Uh, this is from, I don't know. I can't figure this one out. Probably more shekels from the Jays. Now that I got my shekels, I'm about to turn on the Jews. I've only been shilling just to get the shecks. Whoa, wireless keyboard because of my G. Like my G doesn't work. So some legend just sent me a keyboard. This is hilarious. Yeah, baby. Functioning G. See the G right there? Now I can spell gay without copying and pasting. Have you noticed that I, I, I do that? Instead of saying great, I say awesome because I'm just so sick of copying and pasting. This is from Mary. Sweet. Holy Bible, New Living Translation. Awesome. Does that mean it's written in words that I understand better? Because if so, that's really, really cool. Bible for children. Boom. Got to get the pictures in there. Where does it say how to get the shekels? Dude, this is so thoughtful. I own a bunch more books. Man, I've not been reading enough lately. I've been, I, my books have been piling up. The Case for Christ. What God Does When Men Lead. Oh, that looks, that sounds awesome. I can do all things through Christ who strengthened me. Oh, is this a journal? Sick. All right, let me read your note. I don't want to spill any shekels. Man, I got it. I need more shekels. Hey, Jews, I'm going to turn hard on you. I'm going to reveal a lot about your little hero, Ben Shapiro, if I don't get another stack of shekels. Uh, I think he's turning on birch gold. I think he's now all about birch copper. I'm just kidding. Oh, and enjoy gifts for the family and you. Continue to seek truth and peace. God the Father is with you all. Mary, <clears throat> know that he sees you, believes that he loves you, trusts that he will carry you through. Think of you all and praying for you. Love, Mary. That's awesome. You're awesome. I know Bayonet Bob occasionally will write me something like that when he can tell that I'm spiraling. He's just like, God has a plan. I'm like, thanks, Bayonet Bob. And then he goes back to obsessing about uh, our demographics of listeners. He's like, bro, I think we have an audience in Bangladesh. It's so fucking funny. Uh, this one is from Sally. Oh, and I went in today to buy some new arrows for my bow. And the dude, it's so funny. This town now has my back so hard. Like every store or with the exception of one coffee shop. But everybody's like big. They're always like, man, the whole time I had your back. I'm like, well, you could have said something, but I'm glad that you're saying this now. But it's crazy how the tide turned. But once that door was open and Amy realized that, uh, she didn't have to have negative 40 degree temperatures and she could be around her family. And then I started to realize that was better for the, the unit. There was no stopping the, uh, the move train, but, uh, it's definitely hard on me and my brother though. I'm metalism myth bear. Thank you for choosing to be a banner man in the culture war for the sacrifice of your anonymity. I send you this tribute. Let's take it. This, uh, this is long, but it looks awesome. I'm going to check out what she sent me. This is, is it more shekels? Because I'm really feeling shekels. 
This is for O. Oh, you sent stuff for all of us. Do you feel alone in the world, in a world gone mad? Whoa. Bear. Like everyone has agreed to lie about reality for the sake of political correctness, you may be an unbearable. That is awesome. Whoa. Look at that. Look at my crazy finger. I just, my hands get so smashed. Like just everything about my, like when I have been bringing stuff up to show you guys, I'm like, like just look at my finger. Like look at what's all that's wrong with it. There's just scars everywhere. Look at that. That's sick. I'm going to put this on. This might be a little tight on my neck. A little tight on my neck. I could wear it on my dick though. Hang on. It's a little tight, but I will wear it the rest of the stream out of respect. I don't know if this is for my neck. Because I think if I like, it's way too intense. I, I'll end up pulling a, a Bourdain, but it won't be intentional. So we got something for, this is really fun, by the way. I hope you guys are enjoying yourselves. I see there's 800 people here, so I guess I'm not boring the fuck out of you. Sometimes I feel um, like opening stuff is a buzzkill, but it's really not. This is real fun. This is for Amy. That's awesome. Turquoise shell. And what we got here for, is this for little man? This is N on it. Does it mean, is it for Walter? Is there someone named N that I'm not aware of? Dude, these cards are so cool. These unbearable cards. Do you feel alone in a world gone mad? Like everyone has agreed to lie about reality for the sake of political correctness. You may be an unbearable. Damn, son. Another one of these babies. You are getting hungry. You want to eat bone marrow and drink honey and salmon. You are a bear. For those of you just listening, I'm trying to be more conscious of the listeners because the vast majority of our audience just listens. I just uh, swung something like it was a, you, you probably figured out what I just did. <coughs> All right. This is from uh, Amazon. I don't know. Maybe there's a note. Books. The Jugular and the King, an elaboration of the Vilna Gans interpretation of the hidden wisdom of the sages. This sound Jewy? I might need more shekels if I'm going to read that. Is there a note? The book of Yonah, Journey of the Soul, an allegory commentary adapted from the Vilna Gans Adaris Rabbi Moshe Shapiro. With a C and an I. If you spell Shapiro like that, you're like way Jewier than Ben. Hopefully there's a note here. I want context, damn it. Hi, Owen. Was listening to your stream. Heard you talk about Jewish thought. The jugular. The juggler makes more sense. Jugular was a little freaky for me. I'm glad it's the juggler and the king. It's great intro into Jewish ideas uh, to use of the visual used to describe it. Uh, think idea within each from Kaim Averick. Thank you, buddy. I'm excited because, uh, Ohio, not as familiar with this work. Have to finish going through, but the Gaon always is good. Man was a genius. Some trivia in order to not think about Torah in the toilet. He wrote a book on math during that time. I think Jews might be too smart for me. I, I'm reading this stuff and I'm like, you might seriously have to be Ben Shapiro to understand some of this stuff. And I'm a smart dude, but I'm not Jew smart. I'm a quarter Jew smart, which is what I am. I'm enough, I'm enough Jewish to understand that there's more I don't see, but I'm not Jewish enough to see it. All right, two more things, and then we're going to jam a little bit. Bulk supplements. Clean and pure bulk supplements. Boom. Someone wants me to get a bigger penis. Uh, this is to Owen. I don't know who these are from. And I got a lot more. So if I didn't open yours, 
it's, it's not lost. I'm sure they're here, but uh, I'll do, I'll spread it out to another day and we'll have Christmas every day. Inanna, queen of heaven and earth, her stories and hymns from summer. Diane Wolkstein and Samuel Noah Kramer. It looks intense. Maybe I'll read that to balance out the heavy Jew reading. I cannot believe I have actual shackles. That's still one of the funniest things. Beartown, Frederick Backman. I've heard about this. I heard it's really good. My brother read it. He said it's awesome. All right. You found a package. What is this? This is empty. From Obeyed Omer. I don't know. It's kind of hilarious. Someone sent me an empty package. Which one is this? Again, don't know who this is from. Amazon likes to keep shit nice and anonymous. Design and Nature by Adrian B. John. Let's, let's see if there's a note. If I have a note from the Amazon machine. Please discuss with us what is a classic book <coughs> by J. Peter Zane at toptonbooks.net and then Design and Nature, how the constructional law governs evolution and biology, physics, technology, then the physics of life, the evolution of everything. I'm fascinated by that stuff. There's a book I recommend called uh, Sapiens by Noel, Noel uh, Yura, or some wicked Israeli name. Fascinating shit. Fascinating. All right. <clears throat> and by the way, it goes without saying, thank you guys for all of this. What is this? This is strong and gentle bear blend. A uh, whole bean coffee, happy mug, drink, be happy. Oh, and just a shout out to my boy, Steven Crowder. Join his mug club. Crowder's doing great work. So I don't know if you guys know about his mug club, but um, Crowder's the man. Can't say enough good things about that dude. He's consistent as hell. You know, sometimes he can be a little insensitive, but it's because he's focused. I get it. I get it, Crowder. All right, let me jump back to the uh, Super Chats and we'll play a little piano. Hey, Owen, can I be Bison Bear? Also, I met Trudeau the other day. He's got a weak handshake, his breath smells like cheese, and he's got a short temper. Yeah, he's a soy boy. Welcome, Bison Bear. Register at unbearablesapp.com. I was working the, this is from Just, I was working the Billboards Awards carrying my 45 concealed when I heard Kelly Clarkson's virtuous comment that Santa Fe... And Khaled, with his cringeworthy song, I wanted to go up on stage and tell them to shut up. I missed all of that. I didn't know what they said. Kelly Clarkson's getting virtuous. Let me go in the normal chat. Does anyone know what that means? Uh, Trudeau's name sounds like cheese. That's from Ferris. I watched Crowder just to see the Dulev shoutouts. Yeah, dude, Dulev is loved by, by the mug and bear community. Trudeau means soy in French. I would have rubbed my taint before I shook his hand. Well, you could rub, his, rub your taint and then shake his hand and then give him whatever type of hepatitis you clearly have, Greg. Uh, Harry Bear, that was truly awesome. Great job, Dilev. Uh, what's up with Kelly Clarkson? Does anyone know? Uh, all right, I'll just go back to the, the chats here. Who is Kelly Clarkson and Khaled? I don't know who Khaled is. I know who Kelly Clarkson is. She sings some fucking song. I don't know. I literally don't. Even, I have no idea. No idea. Kelly Clarkson. She sings like, "I'm fat, but who cares?" Or some shit. I have no idea. The necklace is mine. Oh, is N for Nimmer? I guess they didn't want to spell out the whole word. Your last name is an N word. I'll send it to you, bud. Is that? It's real tight on my neck. I, do people not know that I have a big neck? Um, the letter explained, uh, I'll read the whole letter. Now that I know that that was, uh, to Nimmer, this is kind of a group effort here. It's not just about me. Okay. 
I made Amy a seashell because I imagine you have a ridiculous amount of bear stuff at this point, and I doubt she had planned on bears being her life aesthetic. <laughs> yeah, but she's grown to love it. She takes pride in it. Like, she'll literally be like, the bears will know. Ask the bears. I mean, it's a dream for a woman to be surrounded by a bear clan of protection. <laughs> but she also does love seashells. The coins in the shell are bronze. These coins were made as the final metal project for my bachelor's of fine arts degree at Southern Illinois University in Edwardsville. Three exist. Wow. Is that my phone? You want to hear from Amy? Hey, let's... hey Amy, you're on, uh, you're on the live stream. What's up? Oh, <laughs> okay, well. You just, got, uh, you just I... got a present. You just got it. Someone sent you a, a bronze seashell. A bronze? Yeah, you'll like it. All right, so that what, sounds amazing. Oh, yeah, handmade. Only three in the world. Whoa. whoa. So what's oh, up? Thank you. Um, I had a question on our... I just wanted to let you know, uh, it's something about buying the house. It's nothing confidential, but is that cool? What, what are we talking here? Um, just can can we share it with, with thousands of people or no? I think it's fine. If anything, they'll give good advice. All right. Um, the, the seller is pushing back on the inspection on us and on them on having them treat the well water for that sulfur smell. And I said, it, that's fine. I don't want to like fine. Uh, break it. Yeah. They said, my aunt said it'd be like maybe 5,000 total if like it meant like redoing the well, but that would be like max and we'd split it with the neighbor. Well, well, Jews have been sending me shekels today. So like literally I just got a bunch of Jewish shekels. No joke from an, from an actual <laughs> Jew. That's amazing. Well, cool. I just wanted to keep you filled in because I didn't want you to be a blindsided if that was a cost in the future. It's cool. I miss you, babe. All right. I miss you so much. I love you. All right. I love you too. All right. All right, sweet. <laughs> what do we got here? These are a prototype of a bear coin I hope to make available for sale by fall. I'm glad I read this. I, I The mold for these leaves the baby bears looking a little handicapped, and I want to fix that before selling them. In spite of that, I thought you would appreciate that they are made at the art school in 2018, so it was important to me that you have one of this iteration. I do recommend you make bigger um, things because I got a big neck. It's from all my shaking. Like, I shake my head so much that my neck is becoming huge. Like, people are like, hey, are you going to apologize? No. And my neck just gets so muscular. The car is something I made to get info out into the world. I found myself needing it when I found someone who might be interested in fighting political correctness when it was either not a good place to talk or I wouldn't have time. So I made these to hand out. I also casually left about 50 of them around campus the day I left. You're a legend. I would like to see many versions made. I kind of wish I had made one that just had Thomas Sowell, Dr. Peterson, uh, Camille Paglia, big thinkers and books on it too. They're very cheap. Uh, one-sided business cards that could be made on Vistaprint for eight bucks, mine or more, because I wanted two-sided. I'm an army vet. I decided to go to art school full-time after a period of working my butt off as a civilian contractor and dealing with a lot of stress issues. I want to have my anxiety under control before I became a mom, uh, as well as having something that I could do at home. I had intended to go to school for painting, but postmodernism had corrupted the discipline too far for me to get uh, value in the classes. Due to physics being a heartless bitch, metalworking still has to teach traditional techniques, and I learned a lot of great skills. Awesome. Well, you're great. Let me uh, plug your website. <coughs> My website is sallyjoemcooper.com. I have nothing for sale yet. I'm working towards that for now. It's just my online gallery and portfolio. I could say a thousand more things, but plan to keep it to a page to be reasonable. Please take care of yourself and yours. Thank you for being a light into the world. Sally. All right, I'm going to plug it again. SallyJoeMCooper.com. That's S-A-L-L-Y-J-O-M-C-O-O-P-E-R.com. Um, it would be awesome to have bear coins because that's my goal is to beat the Jews. And they have shekels, so we need bear coins. We can call them boins or coin heirs. Uh, hey, Big Bear, I haven't been verified yet by you as Blue-Eyed Bear. Work in audio video production with my brother, who is a fan also. Come to Arizona for your next special, and we could really hook you up, Big Bear. Bro, next special, we'll call it Bearzona. 
I got to start writing. I'm out of joke, new jokes. But I'm in, Clint. And welcome, Blue Eyed Bear. Register at unbearablesapp.com. Why do you think people react differently to opinions, moments it's shared with an audience, but usually find common ground in a small group conversation? I think people get overwhelmed and I think people virtue signal. And I don't, and I think it's more understandable than sometimes I want to make it out. I understand virtue signaling. I personally don't do it, but I understand what, why people would do that. It's the same reason. It's real stupid and shitty, but it's kind of like when people in Europe say, we should let in all the immigrants. You're basically saying, I'm so fucking rich that they're my servants and I don't live anywhere near them. It's a way to show um, status or opinions without even saying it. Like you could always tell someone who is uh, right wing by how they reacted to Obamacare. If someone hated Obamacare, you knew everything about them. That's my version of virtue signaling. Back then when I couldn't be open about some of my beliefs, I would just be like, I hate Obamacare. And basically that was like a dog whistle to other people that hated communism. Where they'd be like, yeah, I don't really like Obamacare either. It's kind of unfair, isn't it? And I'm like, and inefficient. Meet me for coffee. When it, come, when it becomes more than five people, all of a sudden you're off your rocker. Your suicide opinion is more common than they act like it is. Much love, man. <laughs> well, yeah, they're trying to virtue signal like I, I'm one of the compassionate ones. Anthony Bourdain will be missed. I'm going to play this real quick. It's my brother talking about uh, suicide. This is four minutes and it's really, really cool. My brother is a teacher and one of the best, one of the best. He he is Man, it's, it, that's one of the reasons I, I don't like public education. And I don't think my brother even sees it. He's so good that like there is no free market force. And it's not even about money. It's about I want him to be, to be able to teach more kids. Like he's the famous one in this town, not me. And that, that was one thing that drew me to Saranac Lake is everywhere I go, people are like, oh, I had your brother in class. He like saved my life. All right, this is my brother. He watched 13 Reasons Why and hated it. And so he used it in his class to teach kids about suicide. And just watch this. He's a beautiful person. It's really, really cool. Uh, let, me, let me get this going here. Like, imagine if comedy was socialized. I mean, it is. Comedy is currently becoming socialized. That's why you see Amy Schumer have five Netflix specials and I have none. Uh, but it isn't though. Imagine if I had to have the same stage time as someone who just sucks. That's what all, a lot of teachers are, are going through. And they almost have this weird Stockholm syndrome where they think they need the union or they need, uh, the system. And I'm like, brother, you're so talented and they're homeschooling their kids right now. But if their kids want to go to public school, they can, they're not like crazy against it. But uh, they're just such good people, man. Just check out what my brother has to say. Where is the reality of suicide? So last year, uh, 13 Reasons Why I came out of Netflix. And I used to recommend that book as a book to, to students. Although looking back, maybe that even the book is kind of like screwy. So when the show came out, I became, because I've had so many friends kill themselves and so many friends die, I got involved with the show to a certain degree. And I was telling my kids, I was telling my students, like, listen, I've had friends kill themselves, a lot of them. <laughs> and I was like, if you, if you kill yourself, I will punch your dead body in the face. Just know that. Know that the last thing will be that you'll know is that like, I'm like on your face, like, why would you do that? In, while I'm teaching, and then what I did was I printed all their names. I printed every kid's name and I gave every kid a sheet of paper with every kid's name. And I said, I want you to write something positive about this person. I don't care if it was from like, oh, I remember on the bus in second grade, you brought in like a, a water balloon. Or like, oh, in third grade, I love the smell of your hair. Or like, oh, I remember in fifth grade, you kicked the kickball and it went like backwards. I was like, bring up memories of each other that you love, because you have them, you know each other. In between teaching all this, 
And it's funny because some of the kids, when I asked them, like, what do you remember about this class? They were like, I remember Mr. Smith said he would punch my face if I kill myself. <laughs> Which about, might, might not have been the best way so to do it. What about the 130 reasons why not? So the 13 <laughs> reasons why, I made a project called 130 reasons why not. Like, kids... Forget killing yourself. Forget this book and this like thing that makes it look almost glamorous and artsy. You know, when I, I got into the backstory of the show where they had to bring like therapy dogs on the set because the actors couldn't deal with like portraying those characters. So they had to like really get counsel. Meanwhile, anyone watching the show it doesn't have a therapy dog. Right? So I made this whole project called the 130 Reasons Why Not. And that first day, I went out. I'm like, we're, we're going outside right now. We were smelling, it was in May. We were smelling lilacs. I'm like, you smell these lilacs? You smell this? That's a reason. That's wow. a reason right there. You're a good man, brother. And then I had them, they all put their reasons in. They were talking about, like, you know, flowers coming up and sunsets and being on the boat and, like, you know, ice cream at Donnelly's. And I was like, let's remember these. Meanwhile... As I was teaching this, this was on a Wednesday. I remember on a Wednesday, I got an email. I got a message that said, from Chris Gozik that said, Muggsy Lee just killed himself. This is my childhood friend. Remember Muggsy? Of course. Of course, right? His brother also killed himself. His brother killed himself three years earlier. Hanged himself. I went to that funeral. You know, and he married my high school girlfriend, Heather. And... Muggsy ended up killing himself. He put a rope around a power line on his son's birthday. On his son's birthday. He left on a four-wheeler and hanged himself. So I went to that funeral on a Thursday. So I tell my, my kids, I'm like, kids, you're not going to believe this. I'm not going to be here tomorrow because I have to go to a funeral for a buddy of mine who I used to walk to elementary school with, high school with. I used to, like, hockey skate with. I used to hang in his house. I, this was, I've known this kid since I was six years old. I have to go to a funeral because Muggsy Lee killed himself. I'm like, and if you don't think that that pain, wait till I come back. I'll tell you about, let me tell you what happened. Wait, to, wait till I come back. And when I came back on that Friday, it was real, dude. It was like, I saw his parents. I saw his two brothers that are left alive. I saw his uncle, who, who had like some disabilities, who, who his parents raised. Man, it was rough. But I think I made a point. For sure, man. I hope. You're a good man, brother. Thanks, brother. So who the fuck? Yeah, brother, that's a good message, huh? That, uh... He's, he's better at being positive than me, oddly. Because he's more, um, he's more mental than me. He's more uh, burdened by thought. Like, I was always seen as the carefree brother, but for some reason, he's, he's developed an ability of getting out of that. And he's such a good teacher, man. Can I be Chiropractor Bear, please? Welcome, Chiropractor Bear. Can't wait for Amy, Amy Streams. You two are great together. Yeah, Beauty and the Bear. Uh, but I get we won't see her for a while. Babies first. Oh, we'll be able to see her. I think that uh, she'll want to do streams. Oh, and thank you for discussing this topic. I lost my father to alcoholism. I consider it suicide. Everyone, please tell your loved ones how much they matter to you. Uh, Night Vision Bear. Love from Eugene. Oregon. I'll, I'll perform there when I move to Washington. Welcome, Night Vision Bear. Uh, remember the dongle on the keyboard box? Do not know what that means. But I'll, I'll check it out again. Did you? Are you the one that gave me the keyboard, Howard? Thank you. Haven. Legendary Haven. Follow him on Instagram. Haven D-E-Z-E-E-U-W. Hopped on here to say hi and got an ad from the Master Jew Shapiro. Awesome. Just wanted to say hi, man. Life is awesome, isn't it? We should make a Christmas album. I got some songs written already uh, later. Sweet. I'm in. Hey, Big Bear. Been with you for over a year, but after a year of college, I finally got enough money to say hi. Let's get ripped together, bud. Can I be verified as Smithy Bear? Welcome, Smithy Bear, on bearablesapp.com. <laughs> yeah, man, I'm going to get chiseled. Just as a challenge. You don't need to be. Like, once you're married and shit, and once you're like a certain age, abs kind of mean you're gay. 
but it's just good to be in good shape. Thanks, Jefferson. Verification por favor. Welcome. Oh, here's Nimmer. Challenge, you both have to write and film a special before you leave the country. Country? When am I leaving the country? We both have to write and film a special before you leave the country. Oh, yeah. Well, um, Australia, I think, has moved. Might be October now. I don't know what the fuck's going on with that, but we should make other stipulations to make it fun. Arizona, Georgia, Florida, Tennessee, or Texas. I'm in, Nimmer. You know I'm in. <coughs> Dude, we got the fucking secret weapon, Artling. Hey, Big Bear, thanks for talking about this. It has changed my perspective on suicide. Good. I'm glad. It's not fucking glamorous. And the shoes I was wearing yesterday were from a dead man's body who shot himself, who lived down the street. It's like people that are like, oh, you don't have experience with suicide. I'm a fucking white male in America in 2018 in my 30s. And most people I know have blue collar jobs. You don't think I know suicide? It's like one of the top ways people are dying now. It's fucking everybody is killing themselves. It's so fucking gay. I'm gonna play a little piano. Um, so you're literally walking in a dead man's shoes. That's hilarious. Oh, that's pretty uh, intense. Well, I'll tell you a quick story about my boy Cap, who uh, kind of killed himself with heroin. When our other buddy shot himself, the guy who had my shoes from, um, Cap's reaction, we're like, oh yeah, he shot himself. Captain, all he did, he's, he just goes, what, what kind of gun? And that's kind of when we, were, we laughed hard, but we're a little cued into the fact that Cap was way too okay with suicide. He didn't even hesitate. He was like, oh, what kind of gun do you use? <laughs> we're like, that's your reaction? He's like, yeah, yeah, I think about that sometimes. Like, what kind of caliber would be like the move? I'm like, all right, man, we're going to keep an eye on you. Unless someone sticks you with the needle, you're killing yourself. Yeah, I agree, Swamp Bear. I agree. Uh, all right, what songs do you guys want to hear? I'm in the normal chat. I don't want to, uh, I want to be able to read that shit. I don't want to just make it, uh, let me make sure I didn't miss anybody. <coughs> Welcome, chiropractor bear. Oh, I already said that. Am I coming to the UK? Not until they let out Robinson, man. I'm, I'll be put in jail. I mean, maybe not. I probably wouldn't be put in jail, but the UK has got to get their free speech shit together. Oh, here we go. That's a nice one. Thank you, Bubba. My soul freedom came from warning that it's okay that people don't like me. It's not my job to change their mind. Yours neither. Let your soul continue to burn brightly. Thanks, Owen. Requesting play bear verification. Welcome, play bear. Church was rad today. This is from BMX Bear. The sermon was like churched up version of a why didn't they laugh stream. Pastor was unapologetically spitting hard truth like the Big Bear. I think it, there's going to be a hard return to Christianity in America. It's just the sermons have to be more interesting is all it is. It can't be like stuffy. It has to be hard truths. Because people are starting to realize nihilism is not as fun as they thought it was going to be. The Pope has been misinterpreted by leftist journalists. Please don't listen to liars with an agenda. The Pope is trying to bring more people to faith. That's from Nick. Well, I've just seen some of his tweets. He basically said, if you get rid of guns, you end war. He tweeted that. That's not interpreted. That He literally tweeted that. So, uh, no. <clears throat> I kind of want to do a parody of the Soy Boy song, but change it to uh, Jason. He's a surgeon, and he's awesome to be around. Oh, that's hilarious. So, 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 my boy. He's a surgeon. He's so precise. He's a surgeon. He is so nice. A strong chin and rough hands and a lot of demands. He's got crazy fucking plans. Uh, he drives a Z28 trans. Not really. Uh, and he's awesome to be around. That's a great idea, Alex. Owen, oh, when and where in Idaho? Uh, I could I could get meeting you off my bucket list. I could get planning on it. Your family are wonderful people. Well, we're I had a place in Boise that I was locking in until I realized that if the baby comes, I'm going to uh, cancel all the dates, and I didn't I didn't want to put that on people because even if I did the tour, I'd still be three weeks early, but 
knowing women, especially Amy's reproductive system, I'm not counting on um, the full 40. So I want to get there as soon as the, the movers are done here. Oh, I'm going to play you guys this. Because that's the only reason I'm here by myself for a month. It's not because uh, I'm just chilling. It's that's the first time we could get movers. Like I'm doing, I'm doing family work, guys. All right, someone sent me this one. It made me laugh. <clears throat> it's six o'clock on a Wednesday. The hipster crowd shuffles in. There's a beta male sitting next to me, sip, sipping hard on his latte of soy. You may want to rhyme that one, but it's almost hilarious that you didn't rhyme it. <clears throat> God, my throat is so fucked. He says, dude, don't you hate the misogyny? I'm not really sure where it is. But it's bad and it's mean and it's the GOP. Then he started to pick at his toes. Oh, oh, la la la, did he die? La la, did he die? Die dumb. Sing us a song, you're the social justice man. Sing us a song for free. Well, we're all in the mood for an outrage mob. And boy, our anuses are tight. <laughs> the lack of rhyming is hilarious, by the way. I don't know if it's intentional, but it's so fucking funny. Now Topanga at the counter is a friend of mine. She gets mad. She gets me my latte for free. And she's fat and she smells and she's hairy. Uh... Where is it? Where the fuck is the rest of it? I want to know what else she is. As hell. <laughs> but hey, I get my coffee for free. She says, oh, and I believe this is bad for me. As she sipped on her caramel so latte with cream. Well, I'm sure that I could be a millionaire. If only a rich guy would finance my dream. You either got to rhyme or not rhyme. <clears throat> and then there's another one. <coughs> now Sally is a randy queer sexual who cannot be trusted with your wife. And she's drinking with Davey who doesn't see her man hands. He's going to be fucking traumatized for life. Ah, ah. And the waitress is afraid to talk politics because the lefties have invaded her space. Yes, they're sharing their hatred of competence. Great writing, bro. They're sharing their hatred of competence. Where's the rest of it? And she's afraid they will eat her face. Sing us a song of this social justice man. That's hilarious. I did not write down who made it. But, hey, thanks, bro. Whoever sent me that. All right. Um, I'll finish up the, the, the super chats, and then I'm out because I'm over two hours now. Uh, hit the like button. If you're here, hit the like button. There's nothing for you to lose. Just hit the like button. Hit the like button right now. Hit the fucking like button right now and subscribe and hit the bell so you're notified. There's no reason not to. Just do it right now. Hit the fucking like button. Or Anthony Bourdain died in vain. If you don't hit the like button, that means that Anthony Bourdain, the hero, died for no reason at all. Oh wait, he did die for no reason. Anthony Burden, Burdain, that's hilarious. I bet Rogan will probably never talk to me again. <clears throat> that dude loves Burdain, but as much as I respect Rogan, I can't, I can't worry about those things. Burdain's a fucking cunt. All right, um, what do we got here? Please come to AZ. We're dying to see you. 
in the SW. I think I want to uh, do a special in AZ. I think the, the last audio brother sold me. Grateful Dead, Ripple. Yeah, that, we should close on that. It's a good one. Hey, Owen, I try to catch as many streams as possible. I really enjoy what you do. Keep fighting the good fight. Just got verified as Jazz Bear. Welcome, Jazz Bear. I think Arizona is where we shoot the next special. Every time you hit the like button, the left gets weaker. That's true. All you have to do is hit the like button. Think about how many things you've done with buttons. Pointless, pointless button pressing. You're on a, you're, you got a remote control. You're just hitting all the buttons, trying to turn a TV on or off. Just no regard whatsoever for your thumb energy. And you can't even fucking, you can't even fucking hit this like button. What kind of man are you? YouTube deleted Legion of Skanks. Yeah, I'm doing it tomorrow. That's why I'm doing a Sunday show is because there will be no live stream tomorrow, unfortunately. Or fortunately, I think I've been doing quite a bit of streaming lately and probably need some sort of natural restraint. Uh, I will be on Legion of Skanks and I will be on Dave Smith's problematic or part of the problem podcast tomorrow in New York City. And maybe I'll pop on a... Um, what else is I got? Maybe I'll go down to uh, Compound Media. I'll, I'll hit them up and see if they're around. Maybe uh, is Gavin McGinnis tape there? I don't know. Maybe I'll try and get on Michael Malice's show too. I'll fucking do a whole run. No, no, no! I will not hit the like button. Hit the like button, Mike. I can't believe YouTube deleted Legion of Skanks. Whoa! I, I, I just, it just dawned on me how crazy that is. They're not even that bad. And by bad, I mean hilarious. I mean, they do some shit. I, it might be for pornography. I think occasionally they'll like flash gay porn to freak dudes out. Um, but that's it. I mean, I hit the like button as soon as I started watching. Thank you, Blue. If you don't hit the like button, you want to press Justin Trudeau's buttons. Yeah, his ass. If you don't hit the like button, that means you want Justin Trudeau to fuck your ass. Uh, Owen, what if Bourdain didn't kill himself? I've thought about that. I just need more evidence. I can't just go on theories. If I state a conspiracy theory, know that there's at least reasonable evidence. I haven't seen evidence for Bourdain. I th- like Kate, whatever, the fucking dress lady, the, the, the handbag lady, I think is way more probable that that was foul play because women are way less likely to kill themselves especially when they have a lot of handbags. But Bourdain was totally in the demographic of killing himself. He was a fucking self-hating uh, guy who's in his 60s, who's a recovering heroin addict and kind of a dick. Seth Rich was definitely foul play. That's why I don't want to uh, jump to conclusions, because when I say Seth Rich was murdered, I want people to know that it's not just a whim. It's not because I fucking hate Hillary Clinton that I say these things. There's right now to me, there's no evidence that Anthony Bourdain was murdered. If you, I, do I think that there's forces at work that are capable of that? Yes. Do I think that that's happened in the past? Of course. But uh, you got to have evidence or else when you say Seth Rich was murdered, it's the same as Anthony Bourdain. Seth Rich was mugged without anything stolen from him. And he was shot in the back, execution style. And um, what's his name? Fucking WikiLeaks implied that he was murdered by the DNC. And there's um, a good amount of evidence that he was the leak. There's, there's means, motive, opportunity. Seth Rich was murdered. But uh, Bourdain, I just, I don't know what, it, what, people are saying, oh, he's about to drop a dime on um, Hillary Clinton. He was about to reveal something about uh, pedophiles or something. I just need info. You know, I need to know what the fuck um, that is. Or else when I say Seth Rich was killed, there's no difference. Does anyone know? I mean, does anyone know what the evidence would be that Anthony Bourdain was murdered? Bourdain had a post about HRC being on bad side of her operators. Well, yeah, but a lot of people hate Hillary Clinton. You got to really fucking, you just dropped to 664. How'd that happen? I don't know. Probably saying Seth Rich was murdered. Who cares? People watch it after. This will be over 10,000. And then in audio, it'll be 80, 100. Hang on. I heard he was about, uh, I heard he was about to give a speech. I don't know. I don't think Bourdain had that much power. He had influence, but I would be way more 
suspicious if Harvey Weinstein killed himself. I bet Harvey Weinstein knows some serious shit. I think he knows where some skeletons are buried. I think Bourdain knows what kind of wine people like. Um, the audio version of this is Why Didn't They Laugh? Available at Podbean, iTunes, Stitcher, all that shit. I'm telling you, he kung fu'd himself trying to jack off. See, I would think that that was more likely. But who knows, man? Who fucking knows? It's, it, to me, it seems blatantly that he killed himself. <laughs> I think people want to not believe people killed themselves, but he fucking did. Seth Rich was murdered. Was it a robbery? Who knows? It wasn't a robbery. They didn't take anything. They didn't take his wallet. They didn't take shit. You're casting Anthony Bourdain away into the stereotype, which is what the media tells us. No. The media tricks you if you overcompensate for their lies. Like, you got to figure out how you understand problems and stick to that. You know? Or else you fucking go too far, and then you're in nonsense land. Seth, Seth Rich said the cops said it was robbery, but they didn't take anything. Right. And then they didn't investigate. And then one of the top DNC fixers uh, all of a sudden represented the family. There was so much fucking evidence that Seth Rich was murdered. It's laughable. Bourdain, there's a few tweets and some conjecture. Doesn't, doesn't mean anything to me. Not everything's a conspiracy as much as you want it to be. Right. I agree completely. I think most conspiracies are in plain sight. All right, Ripple. If my words did glow with the coal, with the coal of sunshine, that's it. If my words did glow with the cold of sunshine, and my tunes were played on the harp unstrung, would you hear my voice come through the music? Hold it dear As it were your own It's a hand-me-down The thoughts are broken Perhaps it's better Left on some I don't know Don't really care Let there be songs Should I look this up? I should look this up. I'm not gonna fuck it up. It's too good of a song. Ripple. This is the last thing I'm gonna do, by the way. I have to set time limits. I'm such a fucking loser that I'll just hang out all day. All right.
There is a road, no simple highway between the dawn and the dark of night. And if you go, no one may follow. That path is for your steps alone. When there is no pebble tossed, nor wind to blow, you can choose to lead must follow. Oh, that's a great line. You who choose to lead must follow. But if you fall, you fall alone. If you should stand, then who's to guide you? If I knew the way, I would take you home. La da da da. La da 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 da. La da 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 da. La da 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 da. Shout out to Shaniqua O'Toole. I haven't seen Shaniqua O'Toole since Twitter. Man, I miss Shaniqua O'Toole. Shaniqua O'Toole loves uh, that song. Kind of most of the stuff I make is unlisted because I wasn't really trying to start a real channel right now. <clears throat> All right, everybody. Much love. Hit the like button now. <laughs> Just trying to scare you. So no stream tomorrow. And thank you to everybody who sent me such awesome shit. It, it's obviously humbling beyond words that you guys take the effort to uh, share with me your books, your thoughts, what you make. And it's an honor that I get to do these streams and you get to come. And this is really, I'm blessed and grateful for all of you. And uh, I'm in a fucking great mood because I stopped eating sugar. All right. Take care, everybody. Stay hydrated. Go cut your grass if you're sad. Cut your grass yourself. Don't hire a Mexican. Peace.